Hello, so today I'd like to share a few thoughts about when you are waiting um, and also a song about waiting as well. I started making a video already on Saturday when I was at home by myself with Lydia but then Johan ended up coming home early and so I didn't get it finished off so I'm finishing off today but there is a little bit from Saturday. And I also have some uh, thought about giving as well. And I would like to share a sermon and also some audio stories that I found. Hi, today is Saturday and it's just me and Lydia at home. Is Esther and Hannah and Joe gone? Hello. They're going to come. Some of my family are down and they have taken the bigger kids to the beach. So me and Lydia are at home. What are you eating? What are you eating? Cupcake. Yeah, and what are we going to do? What should we do? So, I have been praying for something and I have been waiting for God to answer that prayer. And it can be really hard to wait. Like, I remember when Lydia was in hospital, the worst the worst thing about it for us was or just the waiting, having to wait until she was um, big enough for surgery, having to wait until her complication healed. And that's because it wasn't very scary. It wasn't like we thought she was going to die. Like, But it was just, just the waiting. Waiting can be really hard. And there are different ways God can answer prayer. Sometimes God says yes. Sometimes God says no. Sometimes God says wait. Sometimes God gives us something different than what we asked for, and sometimes God gives us far more than what we asked for. Um, so, yeah, waiting, <laughs> the answer wait is kind of my worst answer. And so when I have been praying for this thing, the answer God has given me always is wait. And I don't like that answer, and sometimes you don't want to pray because you know what God's answer is already and it's not the answer you want. And I know I shared a video once about when you don't want more grace. And actually, I don't think I said what it was that I was not wanting more grace, but that's when we had our dog and she was really driving me crazy and I would pray about it and the answer God would always give me was he give more grace. But that was not the answer I wanted. I wanted her gone. And eventually she did go. But sometimes God's answer to us is not what we want. But when you are waiting on God, it's good to remember the facts, the things that are true. Because so often we go on what we feel or what we see. But it's good to remember um, what is true and what we know to focus on those things. So the other day I wrote down a little list of things that are facts and that I should focus on rather than focusing on my feelings or what I can see. So the first one is God is good to those who wait for him. There's a verse, I think it's in Lamentations, it says the Lord is good to those that wait for him and to the soul that seeketh him. Um, the next one is God's timing is perfect. That's very important to remember. God's timing is perfect. Next one is God is never too late, although to us it may seem too late. It is good for me to learn patience and the wait will be worth it. When God answers that prayer or when God does what we're asking him to do, it will be worth the wait. It is always wise and worth it to obey God. Waiting times are not wasted times. Waiting can feel like such a waste of time, but yet if it's God that's wanting us to wait, then there's a purpose. Another one is God hears my prayers. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it or seem like it, or we can't see God answering our prayers or hearing our prayers. God does hear our prayers. God will answer my prayer. So God will answer in some way. God often answers my prayers differently than I expect. Waiting times are learning times. God knows best. God knows better than I do. Um, another thing is to remember the story of Jericho. So a while ago when I was talking about God providing, I said how it's a little bit like those automatic doors. When you get to it, then they open. And if you just 
stay back and wait for the doors to open then they never open and it's like trusting God we we need to follow God and when we get to the problem or whatever it is then God makes a way and provides a need but sometimes um, our situation might be like Jericho we may get to that place and God may tell us to go round and round and round in circles and it seems like such a waste of time and such a waste of energy but at Jericho they were following God's instruction and God had a purpose and a plan and sometimes situations we have may feel a little bit like that we may feel like we've got into that place and God is not opening up the way or God is not um, providing and it may just be that God wants us to wait like in that situation they had to go around in circles um, but there was a purpose to it and another one is delays are not denials so the answer wait and the answer no are two completely different answers so if God's answer to us is wait we need to remember that it doesn't mean that he said no it just means wait um, and a sermon that I listened to this week was I think it was called trusting God in the dark so I'll put the Put the link in the description below that was a good one and kind of goes along with waiting for God or trusting God when we can't see or when we can't <coughs> feel or whatever so with waiting <coughs> some definitions of waiting to remain stationary in readiness or expectation to look forward expectantly to be ready to be taken or used. So waiting isn't just sitting down doing nothing, it's being ready. Um, some other words is to anticipate, to hope for, to long for, to be ready, to await, to hold on, to be patient, to expect. And another verse is Oh my God, I trust in thee. Let me not be ashamed. On thee do I wait all the day. Yea, let none that wait on thee be ashamed. And that's from Psalm 25.
and another thought is from Acts 20 verse 35. Um, the verse says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. So on Friday last week in my Bible class, we did the story of Dorcas or Tabitha. I always thought of that lady called Dorcas. And then one day I taught that story to some kids who had never heard the story before and had never heard the name before. And every time I said the word Dorcas, they all started laughing and said, oh, she's a dog. So <laughs> try not to use that name anymore. Anyway, so we did the story of Tabitha and we learned that verse. And so it's kind of our memory verse for the week about it's more blessed to give than to receive. So because I've been teaching that verse, I've been thinking a lot about my I, I've been thinking a lot about it myself and I was thinking you know it doesn't say it is more easy to give than to receive it is hard to give we can have to sacrifice so it's not always easy to give it also doesn't say it is less exhausting to give than to receive giving can be exhausting and tiring um, it doesn't say it's less costly to give than to receive. It says it is more blessed. And more blessed means more rewarding or more satisfying. Or it makes us more happy to give than to receive. And that is really true. I find that when I take a break from giving, I know it's important sometimes to have a rest and to have a break from things. But I often find that that's when I feel the most down. I am the happiest when I am giving to others so that's an important thing to remember especially if we are if we feel like we are giving all the time it is more blessed more rewarding more satisfying to give than to receive um, if you're a mother then you are giving all the time to your children to your husband um, and yeah whatever you do it can have a lot of giving but it is more blessed to give than to receive even though it may be far more tiring and more costly and harder um, something I found this week, so recently I was reading through a Grandma's Attic story with my children. We're reading through the different stories. If you don't know Grandma's Attic, they are quite fun stories. They are kind of old-fashioned stories. And they are Christian stories as well. They have good morals to them. Or good lessons to learn from them. Um, so we got... So we got to the end of the book and I didn't have any more of them. So I looked to see if there were any audio ones on YouTube. And I found that... I think nearly all the Grammar's Edit books, they're um, on YouTube, they're all as audio stories. And they're like chapter by chapter, so it's not like a whole book and you've got to, you know, listen to a little bit and then try to find where you're up to again. Um, so they're really nice stories if you like audio stories and if you like Grammar's Attic. So I will um, put one of those in the description below as well. Tonight we have an leftover stew with mashed potato and pumpkin on it. Top. One thing I learned when Lydia and Lydia's first year we got given a lot of meals and I learned that you can pretty much put mashed potato on top of anything and it's a meal. Lydia was in her first year 
maybe it was after her, but after her first year, I thought she would never learn to drink. She had a tube in her nose and she was not interested in drinking at all. And I thought she was going to have to get a tube in her stomach, but she did learn. Sometimes it's very hard to be patient, like, Mom, like whatever it is will never pass, but most of the time those waiting times do come to pass. Hopefully. Hey, Lid. What? Play Doh? Yeah. Do you want to do Play Doh? Okay. Okay. What colour do you want? Um, purple. Purple? Okay, let's get the Play Doh. 